So today I have the pleasure of presenting two watches from IWC. A watch brand I have grown to appreciate a lot over the past few years. Now the watches I have today are from one of IWC's core model lines that's been in their catalogue since the 1930s. I present to you the IWC Portuguesa. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. This channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video why not give it a thumbs up and whilst you're there why not hit that subscribe button. IWC have been kind enough to lend me these two great watches which sadly had to go back after a week. It was sad to put them back in their respective cardboard boxes and ship back but feel a bond that I hope doesn't dwindle in time. Now a bit of a confession, I've actually owned my own personal IWC for a couple of months now and here it is. It's my Titanium IWC Pilot Chronograph 41. It's the AMG Mercedes one. Yeah, but it's got a long name. Now, I'll get around to doing a full appraisal at some point, so this is just a tease. You may also notice it's not on the minty factory strap. I'm using an Artem cell cloth strap that I think pairs nicely in black uh, with the sort of dark grey stitch to match the titanium case and the pin buckle. Now, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out Artem's website and the other strap offerings that they have. Now, like most watch brands, IWC has many pillars in the product lineup. All stuffed with complications, colours, sizes and straps. Now the Portuguese sits alongside the Pilot's watches, the Dressier Portofino, the Genta designed and recently relaunched Engineer, that I hope to get some time with very soon, and IWC's dive watch line in the Aquatimer. The Portuguese dates back to 1939 with reference 325 and built by IWC at the request of two Portuguese merchants looking for large wrist watches with the precision of a pocket watch for their domestic market. Now these had the trademark large open time only dial with the sub seconds counter at 6 o'clock. Now I was lucky enough to see an example from the 1950s when I visited Schaffhausen back in 2020 and we dropped into the museum. Well worth dropping in if you're passing. Now IWC made quite a splash in 2024 watches and wonders with the launch of the Eternal Calendar model. A real technical tour de force that's as brilliant as it is utterly useless in the real world. It's one of those challenges watch brands set themselves that I really love. Yeah, to do something just because they can. And in this instance, a watch that if it ran continuously without the inconvenience of servicing would maintain calendar accuracy until the year 3999 at which point someone needs to decide if there's a leap year or not. Now equally impressive is the moon phase accuracy at 45 million years, slightly better than the IWC perpetual calendar at only 577 years, or the normal average 29 and a half day moon phase that most of us have to endure, such as on my JLC. And it's this micro-engineering and mechanical genius that truly draws me in, really amazing stuff. Now looking back at the regular range, the biggest change for 2024 is with the 42mm 7 day with a pretty big reduction in the height of over a millimetre and reworking of the calibre 52011 to offer slightly more anti-magnetism. Now 1mm doesn't sound like a lot but certainly makes the watch sit flatter on the wrist than the previous generation, which is large but by no means too big. And it's kind of the point being a pocket watch on the wrist, yeah, part of the DNA. And at a recent trip to an IWC boutique, I was able to see side by side where the case had been slimmed down. And you can see from the photo that the crown has just shifted upwards in the case, with the front and rear bezels and crystals slightly slimmed down. Now these changes feel substantial on the wrist, taking the watch from maybe to definitely in my view. Now both models including the 41mm chronograph and the 44mm perpetual calendar are available in an array of steel and precious metal casings. In 2024 IWC have launched three new colours with the new case sizes. Now I assume older models will slowly be replaced in time and more harmonisation applied to the overall range. Now we now have horizon blue in white gold, 
Obsidian in what IWC call 5N gold, which is an 18 karat gold with 25% copper alloy. And finally, June in stainless steel. The 42mm in white and steel continues in this case, with the deletion of the red detail on the power reserve, which I kind of liked. So, what I have here are two watches on loan. A 42mm 7-day automatic in the new 2024 June collection, and a 40mm pink or salmon dial, time only introduced in 2023 as an additional dial variant from the 2020 launch model. The IWC Portuguese Automatic 40 reference IW358313. Now the time only stainless steel models retail at six and a half thousand pounds. Now the watch has a diameter of 40 millimeters, a lug to lug across the wrist of 48.9 millimeters and a thickness of 12 and a half millimeters, making this one really wearable for most wrists. Now I have a 170 millimeter wrist and found it almost perfect. The case is stainless steel with no screw down crown and a water resistance of only 30 meters, so not really a swimmable watch. But the watch does weigh in a very light 86 grams. And for reference, my JLC Master Ultra Thin Moon weighs a minus 68 grams. Now the lug width is 20 millimeters, making it ideal for strap options with a taper down to 18 millimeters with a nice stainless steel butterfly clasp. Now the hand assembled pink salmon dial has a metallic summary effect that contrasts well with the rhodium plated slim hands and applied numerals with the constant second sub dial having a radial effect to contrast it against the dial. All the hardware is beautifully finished on both watches when viewed under a magnification. Now all Portuguese models have open case backs where here displayed is the in-house calibre 82200 which has some nice detailing with some gold accents. Now this movement is 30 millimeters in diameter using IWC's Albert Peloton automatic Paul winding system first introduced 60 years ago and has hacking seconds. It has 31 joules, runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and runs it for 60 hours. Now summing up, a pretty nice package with some very stylish color choices. But which would I pick? And that's a tough call. But money no object, I'd go for the gold with the obsidian dial. Actual me? Well, probably the salmon dial. It's tough to beat. So moving on to the IWC Portuguese Automatic 42mm. We have reference IW501705, retailing at £11,500. Now this model has a 42.4mm case with a 51.7mm lug to lug. Now this watch weighs in of still a very light 102 grams. And for reference, my Omega Planet Ocean 43.5mm on the rubber is 135 grams. So win again to IWC, which isn't so bad as it has a strap that pulls down and is comparable to an Omega Speedmaster Professional. The case thickness is only 30mm, which is super slim for the size and makes the case far more elegant than some of the hockey pucks out there. The case is stainless steel with no screw down crown and a water resistance of 50 meters, so a bit more swimmable if you swap out the leather strap. Now the lug width is 22mm with a greater taper because of the extra lug width down to 18mm and with a stainless steel and very robust almost steampunk deployment clasp. Now this model is fitted with a thick but soft alligator leather strap that I found really comfortable with plenty of holes either way for larger or smaller wrists. I think I'll be asking for a slightly shorter strap as I'm not keen on too much of the strap tail sort of coming back underneath the watch. Now there is a specific bracelet version of the 42mm in the blue dial. Uh, I did try this on at the boutique and there's a lot to like but I'd still stick with the leather straps. With the 42mm dial we have the June metallic summary effect with a 60 step process including 15 layers of clear lacquer, ground and polished to give real optical depth. Now with the distinctive railway track seconds track around the perimeter it's certainly easy on the eye. The hand applied numerals and hands are solid gold and it's fair to say in certain light conditions are a challenge to read at a glance. However, a very striking and get plenty of compliments from non-watch enthusiasts. The 42mm always has a date window and it's nice to see the date disc colour match to all models, something the likes of Omega should really take a tip from. 
And it's this attention to detail and the absolute fine finishing of the dial and case that marks this watch up in the price range and needs to be held admired to appreciate it. Now on the back of this one we have what must be the ultimate clear case back. And for me, a real showstopper. That 38mm calibre 52011 fills the case cavity giving an edge to edge that few offer, affording it real bragging rights. Now this is an evolution of the 2015 calibre update that saw upgrades to the Peloton system as well as the addition of two barrels to aid the release of all that 168 hour power reserve. Now with 249 components, 31 joules, running at 28,800 vibrations per hour and over 7 days, this is a weekend watch you can rest for the week and come back with 2 days left in the tank. Impressive stuff. Now speaking of appreciation and value. There's something that can't be described, that has to be felt. And in this case, I'm talking about the winding feel of this 5200 caliber. It's meaty, but smooth with almost no backlash in the gear system up to the handset. Now, I'm not sure if this equals additional wear and tear, because I understand there's more ceramic components in there, but it feels so damn good. The 42 millimeter range is stunning. It's a shame the old model is still actively advertised at massive discounts as this may put some collectors off. However, it also offers exceptional value if you don't mind the extra millimetre of that run out model. Now, which one would I pick? Well, I'm going steel on this one and it's a toss up between this June version and the blue dial on the bracelet. Now, there was a black dial that I really liked on the old model, which is now only available in a gold case. So it's maybe worth road testing at a lower price point and hang on for a deal on this one, maybe when the newer models are further down the line. So in summary, has time with these two watches affected my affection for the Portuguese range? And the honest answer and simple answer is no. Which would I want to own if I had to pick either? Well, I'd go for the 42 millimeter, but could still get a load of pleasure out of the 40. I've never really warmed to the chronograph 41 and the perpetual calendars are ludicrously large for my slender wrists. I feel JLC would offer me a better outcome for a perpetual calendar. Now, as daft as it sounds, I'm tempted to go back and try the 2022 release with the white dial and blue panda subdials. Now, I think it's pretty striking and lots of fun. Yeah, I could go dressy with some of the metallic dials, but I'm all about versatility. And this one should be a riot to wear on any occasion. It also has that little flash of red on the power reserve that I miss. Now this has been a real deep dive for me into IWC and particularly the Portuguese. And thanks so much to the team at IWC for supporting this opportunity. Now I'm all about the details, if you haven't already guessed, and making these videos really helps me become the informed and passionate collector I want to be. Now let me know your views on the Portuguese, especially if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Now I've seen a few in the wild and owners tend to be really knowledgeable of the brand and I really dig that. My experience is that IWC boutiques have also been great, so get immersed and go and delve into the brand. You might find some that you really like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did making it. It's not natural for me to be short and concise with so much to talk about, but that's just the way I roll. Anyway, for now, I'm Andy. This has been The English Watch. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.